We ate at one of the best curry houses in London, but we kind of regret it. Yeah, we just kind, a little. Just a little bit, and we want to talk about that. But before we do, I want to thank every one of you guys for bringing us to 9,000 subscribers. The only thing I ever thought that I would get out of making a YouTube video was being made fun of. And now we're at 9,000 subscribers. It's amazing, thank you so much. So thank every single one of you guys. Almost to 10,000, we have big announcement coming to 10,000 subscribers, but we got a little minor announcement. So stay to the end of the video because we have a super cool, super awesome announcement that you're probably gonna like. It's gonna, you know, we'll go over it at the end. So wait till the end, we'll go over it. Now, we went to the show. which is a very popular uh, Indian restaurant, curry house in England. But the one thing that surprised me about England in general was just the ubiquitous nature of a curry. There is curry everywhere in England. There is curry at the fish and chip shops. There is curry at the Chinese takeaway. There is curry at the pubs. There is curry the markets. at the market. But England has such a long history mm -hmm. with the spice trade and with the whole, uh, it, just India in general. Yeah. So you think of all these bland eaters, but for some reason they just have a profound love <laughs> for curry. Yeah. It was actually brought to England in, I believe the 17th century through the spice mm -hmm. trade. And it just developed. And there was a couple of Renaissance in 1920s, 1930s. They just really popular popularized uh, the UK's uh, love for curry. Which is so shocking to me. Like I never knew that coming into it all. No, and, and it's so weird because like here in America, all, like our things are, we do have, you know, Indian and uh, Southwest Asian restaurants and stuff like yeah. that. But we tend to more pizza, um, more um, Italian, Italian as far as takeaways, I think we feel the same about Chinese, but it's mm -hmm. just not, curry's just not so much of a thing here. It, it's growing, but uh, it, it, until you go to the UK, you're not gonna really appreciate it. Yeah. But it's so big that it's actually affected the rest of the world because there's a lot of places, like you go to Japan and you say, hey, Japan has curry. That must be a direct influence of India, and it's not. It's actually an influence of World War II when the British soldiers came in. Mm -hmm. They brought curry with them, which started the Japanese love and created Japanese curry. <laughs> so when you're eating a Japanese curry, you're actually eating a rendition of a British curry, which is a rendition of a, uh, a, a Indian curry. It gets even deeper. If you go to like one of our favorite dishes when we go to an Indian restaurant here, because we love curries, mm -hmm. we love a good curry. Uh, Butter chicken is actually fought between India and the UK of who actually invented that dish. Yeah, and I had no idea of that. I just assumed it was always Indian. Yeah, I, I well, there's still potential that, that it, it, is. It, it is Indian because yes. it wasn't like Boris Finnegan yeah. <laughs> made it in his pub one night on a drunken stupor. It was, they still say it was an Indian chef who created it but they say that the idea was created more towards the uh british palate yeah and you know india says that it was just a uh something that they just liked yeah that, that, that the british liked that india's made which uh, is one of my favorite dishes yeah if you have any information or a side to that let us know in the comments but let's get started we went to dashoom dashoom is one of the glitzy glamour high profile, get on your Instagram, you'll see <laughs> five reasons to eat at the Shum <laughs> yes. in the UK when you travel. Yes. My life was changed by these colors. Yeah, that's that Instagram cringeworthy. Yeah. But we we already did that with uh, um, Bread Ahead and it was amazing. Yeah, it was. So. We said, why not? We just left, uh, I believe, the museum. Mm -hmm. So we went down to Dishoom in Soho. We went to the Soho uh, location because there's multiple locations. I believe there's one in Edinburgh and a couple in London, maybe throughout the UK. Uh, I'm gonna put all their information down at the bottom. That way, if you wanna go. The thing we did was wait in line. Yes. When we waited in the queue. Um, the queue. I love that. <laughs> 
when we were first waiting in the queue, it was kind of cold out and cold. it was it was kind of a long line. Um, but someone came out and started bringing everyone uh, little cups of chai. Hey, Tiffany, while we're waiting to get into this Indian restaurant, they gave us tea. Mm -hmm. Would you like to give it a chai? <laughs> see what I, you see what I did there? Yeah, you're yeah. <laughs> and the chai was very good. Yeah. I thought that was just so cool that they even done that. Yeah. Like that was. Yeah, keeping you warm. Yeah. And it, it was nice just to sit outside and like to, to taste the chai. It tasted very, well, I want to say authentic, but I'm not Indian. <laughs> uh, Tiffany's Romanian. Well, you got a little Indian blood in you. I am British and I have a little bit of Indian blood. But my favorite part, or, or Tiffany's favorite part of what I got at me is I just got a little <laughs> tiny bit of that dog in me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know. <laughs> we get into the restaurant. To say the restaurant was beautifully decorated is an understatement. Yeah. Very classy, very chic, very demure. When we first walked in, we sat down at the table and they was like, do you want a drink? And I was on vacation in England. So I was like, don't mind if I do. <laughs> you know? So we was going through this list of drinks. They had a very big list of drinks. I'm not a drinker, Tiffany's not really a drinker. So we didn't really understand of it. So we just picked the one that looked the coolest. Yeah. I chose the 1948 sour. Cause I just like sour drinks. That's my thing. I like them. If I'm going to drink, I want a margarita. I want something that's sour. I like a sour flavor. I had the Bombay Fellini and it was very fruity and delicious. Yeah. And it just tasted like candy. Yeah. <laughs> and we're listing all the ingredients and stuff of what was in it, the price and everything of everything we ordered there. It was really good. We don't have too much to say because we're not too much of drinker connoisseurs. Yeah. All I know is I finished it mm -hmm. and it was good. I also ordered a drink to help me through what I ordered next. The next was, this was the thing about the menu, okay? So the menu, it wasn't limited, but I wouldn't say it was um, typical yeah. to a curry house. So there, mm -hmm. there was no like just straight chicken curry. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think there was a tandoori chicken. There might've been a tandoori chicken. There might've been that, but I know there but, was not butter chicken or chicken. Well, there's a thing about that, right? So, uh, we ordered probably the most common thing because like in our mind, we wanted to compare like American curry mm -hmm. to uh, English, UK curries. Yeah. It, India's just not even in there. Just like, hey, everybody <laughs> said it was better, so we just wanted to compare it, yeah. right? So we, uh, we first ordered the samosas. It came out with some sauces. There was this hot sauce there that was just, in, just incredibly good. Mm -hmm. I mean, the quality of the samosas was like, it was like a flaky pie crust on the yeah. outside of it. I mean, it was, it was what you wanted. Yeah, it was very good. Yeah, we, we really enjoyed that. And then we moved on to our main course. I ordered the Chicken Berry Britannia, which was uh, a biryani. Now, I'm familiar with the biryani. If you've seen some of our older videos, we have a Pakistani friend. He's a uh, missionary. We got Pastor Rashid. We're going to go to the fair. Do you know what cholesterol is? I heard about that. Well, you're about to get to know a lot better tonight. And we go over to his house quite often. His wife makes amazing dinners. Yeah, she does. Amazing. So I was like, I'm going to try the chicken biryani the drive fruit thing was kind of like well you know but i i don't know mm -hmm. right but it was it was good it was it was very good it came in this clay pot and uh it was uh the one of the things that it said was um it says kachi style and i asked uh the other day when i knew he was going to do this video i was asking you know our friend like what does this mean and he kind of just meant that was like slightly undercooked rice Oh, okay. It was like slightly, like that's what he meant. Like kachi style is just like, not like hard rice, but you know. Not overly soft. Like al dente yeah. style. So I didn't really catch that while I was eating it, but apparently that's what that meant. I had the chicken ruby and the guy said that that was like the closest to um, like a chicken tikka marsala or a butter chicken. 
because that's what I always order when I come yeah. to an Indian restaurant. And as far as the differences, I don't know, but it was really good, whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was really good. And I really, really enjoyed it. I remember being, I think, like a little bit spicy, but it was nothing crazy. Because yeah. I don't have like a real high spice tolerance. I do like spicy, but um, it wasn't too bad. There's a there's a word in there uh, when you're actually talking about it. It's called uh, makahani in the description. And I also asked our friend, and he said that that's kind of like a buttery style sauce. Oh, okay. So it was kind of close flavor profile. I wouldn't say it tasted like a butter chicken, mm -hmm. but it was good. Now, yeah. if I could rate this meal, uh, you know, one to ten. I would give it an, I would give it 8.59. Yeah. Now, just so you know, right? I have this whole thing um, <laughs> about the rating system. There is no tens. Tens are to be looked back upon, upon your deathbed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a, a, a true 10 will never gain its reputation until you're completed or almost completed with a life. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's high. Yeah. So why are you, why are we saying we regretted it? Because here's the thing, when you when you want to kind of bask yourself in the culture mm -hmm. of a place, right? You don't go to like it, it, to me that was equivalent to us or one of you guys, uh, one of you people. What do you mean, you people? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> coming over to um, America and going to Philadelphia and going to the five star restaurant up on top of the peak of the tallest building and ordering the $50 uh, cheesesteak. Yeah. I'm sure it's gonna be good. I'm sure you're gonna like it, but there's gonna be a big difference between that and going to the, uh, you know, Geos or gems or Pats. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like these dirty, greasy spoons that the majority of the masses eat. And when actually the, you know, when the food was gaining its popularity and gaining its name, those were the places that was driving it. Yeah. I kind of want to walk into, and I think we're going to try this next trip. Yeah. We just want to walk mm -hmm. into a neighborhood curry house. Just something that you guys would get on a, on a Friday night. Yeah. Like, it's like, you're not, I'm sure a lot of people do eat to the restaurant we ate to, but it's just, that's not the norm for everybody every day. And that, yeah. that's all. We just kind of want to eat what the normal people living around eats well i'm sure i'm probably majority of the people who watch this from london they're probably like yeah i've ate there quite often yeah but it's which kinda, if you have ate there let us know yeah which is kind of like the same idea of like over here if you look up and say you know i've ate at uh, ruth chris mm. often it's a high steak place but i'm sure if you're talking to the masses they probably ate more of like outback steakhouse or mm -hmm. their local steak shop or something like that that they prefer and that's going to be more of it so yeah would i say don't go to it no, I'm not saying that. You know, if you was there and that was someplace that you just wanted a really nice dinner, I would say go. I think our total in all was 95 pounds, which was surprising yeah. for everything that we ordered. That same same place, let's switch it to New York City. Mm -hmm. That would have easily been somewhere around $170, $180 mil American dollars. Yeah. And you bring that up uh with tip and everything else you know you're probably bordering 200 which that would probably be somewhere closer to around 150 170 pounds yeah so the idea that we really didn't would service charge no tipping but they did do a service charge to bring that up to like 95 pounds overall mm -hmm. i feel like that was fair that was like a yeah you're, you're in soho that, that wasn't a terrible a, price a nicer restaurant but to be honest with you i think that you would probably find something more to our liking Mm -hmm. Like the fries at Camden Market. Check out the Camden Market video. Yeah. Them curry fries was insane. Yeah. At a lot more reasonable price. I can't wait to go back and eat something like that. <laughs> Speaking of not being able to, or can't wait to go back. Time for our next surprise on our road to 10,000. Our next surprise is, as we speak right now, we are currently working on a Discord. But as you're watching this video, that Discord is open. We are gonna put a link in the description that you can just come and talk with us. We got a couple of chats set up, once for the history. You know, we have a lot of stuff going on the Blitz. Um, once for uh, the uh, 
just general conversation. But one of the things that we have is for our future trip that I have a map put up of where we're planning on going, where we plan to be. But we're, we want you guys to help us. Yes. There's a few things that we want to do. We want to stay in a castle. We want to find the Loch Ness Monster for you guys. You guys ain't been able to do it. It's not your fault. Nobody can be perfect at everything. I'm going to get over there. I'm going to get him scrounged up, get him thrown away. All right? Yeah. We're going to... We're gonna... Wait, what? what was the word? What's we're going to sort it out it's for gonna, you. We're going to sort it. We're going to sort the Loch The Loch Ness Monster, just go to bed tonight knowing that in a few months, the Loch Ness Monster situation is going to be sorted. Yes. Okay? Sleep easy tonight. Yeah. But seriously, though, we we also we we want to go. At least I want to. I want to go to a pub where they have like I don't know what's that called, like open mic night or something. Yeah. We want to see what like the locals coming to the pubs and performing. Like I want to see that. I don't know if that's a thing or not, but if it is, and you have any suggestions on where to go, let us know. <laughs> yeah. So. Check out our Discord. Always like the video. We got some very cool videos. We are back. I'm sorry for the long delay, but like I said before uh, in, in the community page, it is planned. We're aware we're leaving for New York, but we have videos coming. We're going to film some more videos, and, but I hope you like this one. And if you guys want to check the shoe, there's a link down there. But with that, I am rich tripping. I am no longer rich because I am not smug. Yes. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, you rascals. Check out the Discord page. We will see you there. Bye.